What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K sample footage. Now this footage is available for everyone to download from uh, Blackmagic's official site. Yeah, I guess they just want you to color grade it and see what the camera is capable of. So let's get right into Final Cut and get started. Now today I picked five clips from the Blackmagic's official site. I believe there are about six in total, though I couldn't get the sixth one because those are shot in RAW and uh, so Cinema DNG RAW and of course Final Cut does not support um, Cinema DNG RAW natively. So I have checked my trusty notepad here. All these were shot in ProRes 422 in a variety of ISOs. So um, let's get started. So the first one, this is from the nature um, clips, a simple shot of a spider in sort of like wood, it's like woody foliage in the forest. And this should be a pretty straightforward grade. So let's get started. If you go into the color inspector, the first thing we want to do is do our um, base color correction or base color grade where we want to fix exposure, we want to fix white balance and so forth. So I'll open up the color, the color board. Um, there will be some instances where I do use the color curves, though it still does the same stuff. So we want to bring more contrast into the image. So we want to crush those blacks, uh, get some decent contrast, and we want to pull up those highlights just to stretch that dynamic range a little bit. As you can see, it's obviously pretty washed out because it was shot in a uh, black magic log. Now, one thing I have noticed just coming from a person that's never really shot with a cinema camera of some sort is that the, the color profile on this camera isn't as desaturated as some of those that you get on Panasonic or, you know, Sony's S-Log or Canon C-Log. It's actually a lot more saturated Basically, it just makes the whole grading process a lot easier. As you can already tell, we still have a lot of colors in there that um, are already embedded into the image. So yeah, so basically I fixed the contrast in this image. Now we need to bring in some of those colors. So I'll add a, another color correction. This time we use a color wheel and I just want to boost the master saturation and I'll scroll down a little bit and I'll boost the midtones just a tad bit just to give it a little bit more punch. If this was my footage and I shot it, I could definitely send it out looking like this. It looks really good to me. So now I'm gonna play a bit with the color temperature. I do tend to like my videos a little bit on the warm side. It's just the way that I like them. I will warm it up to 5,500 Kelvin just to get a little bit of that golden kind of look. And that's already looking pretty perfect to me. Now, um, throughout this entire video, I will speed up some sequences just to um, kind of limit the total length of this video. So do bear with me. I'll move on to the next shot. And here we have a, a lot of greens. So I'll pick a frame that that's reasonably sharp so I can start working on it. Yeah, I think that one looks pretty good. So just like before, the base correction we're going to do is, you know, get back the contrast in the image. As you can see, the, the shadows are really pulled up. I want to pull those down to kind of bring back the contrast in the image. So pull down the shadows a little bit and we'll pull up those highlights just below 100. You don't want them to clip too much. Well, I'm going to boost the overall exposure of this image because I find I can see that the general levels of it are a bit low. As you can see, the average level there is 43, which is quite low, but the image still does look fine. So I will just work with it a little bit. I'll pull down the highlights a little bit because the praying mantis started looking a little bit more exposed there than I would have wanted it. And already you can see if you turn that off, it's made a huge difference just by changing the contrast. Um, effectively, the image looks a whole lot better. But now we need to um, play around with the colors a little bit. So I will pull up the color wheels. What you want to do is, as mentioned before, I like my videos a lot warmer than a lot of people would like, but that's just the way I like it. So I'll take the temperature up to 6,000 and then I'll add some saturation in the master. So global saturation needs to go up a little bit and then in the midtones as well, just to kind of get it popping. There we go. That looks pretty decent to me. However, one thing I am noticing is that the greens are a little bit too sort of yellowish orangish. I don't typically like my greens to look like that. It just makes the scene look a bit wilted, makes it a bit 
autumn-y, looks a bit like autumn. So what I'm actually gonna do now is apply a secondary color correction just to the greens and we're gonna change the hue just to kind of get them a little bit more greener as opposed to a yellowish, orangish green. So to do that, I'm gonna open up my hue and saturation curves. And what we wanna do is, well, pretty much to change the hue of the colors, we wanna change the hue versus hue. And we get our eye droplet and we'll select the color that we want to sample. This is a pretty green shot. It shouldn't be difficult to pick something green. So there we go. If we push it up, the greens turn yellow or orange as you can clearly see. So we don't want that, we wanna pull them down so we actually get a more true to form green, a more punchy green. That's looking a whole lot better. And just to kind of show you what that does, turn it off, turn it on. You can see what it's done there. It's, it's kind of just gotten rid of that little bit of orangish, brownish, sort of like wilted look, made it look a bit more lively, made the, you know, the forest look a lot more alive, if you'd like. So yeah, already that's looking like a really good shot. I love the way it looks. I think this is perfect. I would deliver the shot like that. Let's move on to the next one. The first thing you notice as soon as you open up this shot is just the dynamic range. It's quite a lot of dynamic range. You can see a lot of information in this window. You can see the buildings out there. You can see far behind that as well. However, there is quite a bit of noise. So if you do look into some of the shadowy areas, you do see a lot of noise. Now, this shot was shot uh, between ISO 1000 and 1250. Um, it is ProRes 422HQ, but you can see that we're already getting quite a bit of noise. It's a significant amount of noise, and this is still a four-thirds sensor. I mean, it's probably one of the best performing low-light four-thirds sensors, but ultimately, you cannot bend the laws of physics. A smaller sensor will not get as much light as a bigger sensor and will not perform as well in low light. It is what it is. So I guess it's just something that you got to take with a, you know, with a grain of salt. It is a good camera, but in low light, it probably won't be the best there is. What I'll actually start off by doing is I'll pull up the global exposure first. However, what that will do is it will overexpose the window, but then we'll correct that in a, in a secondary correction after. So we can pull up, pull down the blacks. We'll pull up some of those whites. I feel like we can get a little bit more dynamic range out of this. So I'll pull, I'll pull up the whites a little bit. And as you can already tell, the window is already pretty much overexposed. But as mentioned before, we will fix that later in sort of a secondary correction. The shot still seems to be quite a bit underexposed. The average exposure there is around 50. So we really need to push those whites a little bit higher just to kind of light up the room a little bit more. We got to pull down the blacks as well to kind of compensate for that. And I think this is looking all right. I mean, it's looking reasonable. I do love the contrast in the image. Just gonna crop the image until majority of what's in this shot is just her skin tones. Crop the hair out a little bit more. Yeah, that's looking good. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna open up the vector scope. As you can see, her skin tones are slightly on the yellow side. This line over here is what represents the skin tone line. In a case like this, where what's on the screen is her skin tones, you'd want them to be dead center on that line. And they're slightly shifted towards the yellowy, sort of like um, orangish tones. So now I'm gonna apply a secondary correction to her skin tones. So I'm gonna add a color board. All I wanna do is go to the color section and just go to the mid-tones and lower the sort of yellowish, orangish colors in the mid-tones just until the, the skin tone line is j just about centered with the reference. And I think that, that that should be about fine. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna undo the crop. And the very first thing that you notice is that in doing that, the entire image has completely cooled off. It's like, looking a lot more bluer than it did before. And we obviously don't want that. All I wanted to do was just make sure that her skin tones are corrected, not so much the rest of the image. So what I can actually do now is I could apply a color mask to just her skin tones. However, one thing you will notice is that her skin is actually similar in color to a lot of the furniture in the room. So I cannot do that because it will change those as well. But what I can do is I can actually add a shape mask. And what the shape mask will do is that it will mask off a region where the skin tone correction will only apply within that shape. And so I can reshape it, turn it into a square, turn it into a circle. And I'll just 
turn it a little oval looking shape and put that around her body. So what that is doing now is that it's applying that skin correction just to her skin and the rest of the image is looking as warm as it should be. Of course, this is a shape mask, so I would have to keyframe it and make sure that it does follow her throughout the entire scene. So that's already looking a lot better. So what I actually wanna do now is apply a third color board and I'm gonna create a shape mask. This time we can create a very square-ish looking mask. So I'm just gonna shape this up to cover the window. Another thing I'm beginning to notice is that when we did the base um, exposure correction is that the lamp in the room actually ended up getting quite a bit overexposed. So I will apply that shape mask to the lamp as well, but I'll just start off by lowering the highlights in the window. And you can already see that's looking a whole lot better. All that clip information in the highlights has come back. Looking good, it's done, and I'm really pleased with it. If I had shot this footage, I definitely would be happy with the way it looks. So let's move on to the next shot, which is the balloon shot. As soon as you open the image, the first thing you notice is just the dynamic range. There's a whole lot of information in the sky and there's just so much information on the ground in the shadows. This looks like a really, really good looking file. What I'm gonna do is just like before, we're gonna start off with the base color grade, which involves bringing back the contrast and any sort of white balance that might be slightly off. So I'll open up my color curves. I'm gonna pull up the blacks a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the whites all the way, cause this is have really, really underexposed. Pull them up all the way. It seems like a lot of information in the sky here is lost, but that's not much of a big deal. There isn't much there anyway. Now I'll go to the color wheels. And basically what I wanna do now is just increase the whole global uh, saturation of the image. So we'll do that, we'll go into our midtones, we'll increase the saturation again. And one thing that I'm already noticing is that the image seems to have a bit of a greenish tint to it that I'm not really liking. I definitely wanna get rid of, of that green a bit. I'll pull up the tint to about seven. It does feel a bit cool, so I will warm it up a little bit just to really emphasize that golden hour type of look. So I will push up the temperature to 6,000 Kelvin. I will push it even a bit higher. Um, it's really difficult to tell here, but if we push the footage forward and you look at the house and the tree in the background, you do see how the color white balance has changed that. So the color temperature has definitely warmed up the image and is definitely giving some really good golden hour vibes. So the next thing now we need to do is fix that sky because that sky is looking crazy, isn't it? So when we did our base exposure correction, we completely lost the sky. And you can easily see that here, the sky just looks terrible. So to fix that, I'm gonna apply a secondary um, exposure grade. So I'll pull out the color board and basically we're gonna apply a shape mask. We're gonna apply a squarish or rectangular-ish looking square just to sort of cover up the sky and get back some of that information. And then basically all I wanna do is just pull down the highlights and there we go. We've got all that information back and the image is looking really good. I mean, there's so much dynamic range in the image. Now, one thing I am noticing, just coming from a person that predominantly shoots with DSLRs or mirrorless type cameras, is that there's quite a bit of information in these video files to work with. Now, this these were shot in ProRes 422 HQ. These are really, really high quality files. And in here, in this editor, it really shows because you can really stretch these images and you can push them around, you can pull the colors and you can do a whole lot of stuff and the image isn't falling apart at all. It's just looking really good, which is something that I'm typically not used to because usually I shoot with DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, which generally tend to not be as flexible in that respect. So this is really nice to see. One other thing I am noticing in this image is that it's not really an exciting image. I mean, it looks like there's a, okay, there's a balloon and there are people and the sun is there. However, this was slightly before golden hour. So you aren't quite getting those really magical sort of lush, soft golden hues from the sun. So um, what I'm actually thinking of doing is applying a LUT to this footage just to kind of give it a more stylized sort of look. To do that, I'm just gonna apply an orange and teal LUT that I created in Adobe Lightroom by myself. 
yeah, I already like this a lot better than before. We're really getting a sort of rose gold vibe from the sun. It's already looking a lot more interesting and exciting. The final clip was supposedly shot between ISO 1000 and 3200. And I'm guessing this part of the shot in particular was the 3200 one because as soon as you open it, the first thing you immediately notice is just the noise in the image. It is, there's quite a bit of noise. It looks grainy. You can see a lot of noise in her hair there a little bit. You can actually see a lot of noise in this um, window window pane beam over here. As mentioned before, it's still a four third sensor. I think it would be unrealistic for us to really expect groundbreaking low light performance. The first thing we need to do is we need to bring back the contrast in the image. So I'm gonna start with a base color correction just to sort of get those levels looking good. The contrast in the image, the white balance, the exposure, the levels in in this image are a little bit too low. So I will pull up the global exposure a little bit, pull down the blacks, get that contrast going just above zero. And then I'll pull up the highlights just to really get that exposure in the whole shot looking how we want it to. And you can already see this is already looking much, much better than it did before. So I'll just fine tune it a little bit. That's already looking pretty nice. I'm gonna crop the image such that all we can see in the frame is her skin because now I wanna check how her skin tones are looking because they sort of look greenish and yellow. So we'll just crop the image a little bit. Uh, make sure we have mostly her face in there. So we'll crop it left, right, top, bottom, just like that. So I'll open up the vector scope. Just as I suspected, the image is really yellow. It's actually going towards the greenish areas in the image. So to correct that, I'm going to create another uh, secondary color correction for her skin tones. I'm gonna go to the color board, color, and I'm just gonna lower the mid-tones in the yellow greenish region to get those skin tones right on the reference skin tone line. That's already looking a lot better. We can reset the crop just so that we can see how the whole image looks. Of course, the image has turned really bluish. Color temperature has really gone down. It's looking really cool and blue. I mean, this shot still would be usable like this, just depending on the context of the video that it's being used in you still could use this. In this particular case, I think I'll just stick to the skin tone correction. I still want the rest of the image to be relatively warm, just like it was before. And as, as I mentioned to you guys before, I really like those sort of warmish, orangish, yellowish type of vibes in my um, color grading. So we'll make sure that that correction goes into a uh, shape mask and we'll just shape this around her face. There we go. That is our skin correction. As mentioned before, this is a shape mask, which means that it's gonna stay in that one position. So I would have to add keyframes to make sure that it follows her face throughout the entire video. If I turn that on and off, you can already see how much of a difference that makes. Before the skin tones were looking really yellowish and muggy and greenish, and now they're looking a bit more realistic. But one thing I am noticing is that I probably went a bit too hot with the yellows. I probably lower them a bit too much. So I'm just gonna raise the yellows just a little bit. So introduce a bit more yellows just so that it looks a little bit more realistic in the context of the image. Because I think her skin tones were beginning to look a little bit more bluer than everything else in the image to the point that it was looking unnatural. So I just raised that up a little bit to sort of find a middle ground. And that's looking much better. We fixed the exposure and we fixed the contrast, but one thing that's still really noticeable in the image is the just the noise in the image. If I zoom into that pillar again, it's just so much noise. I don't know how I'd fix that without using any denoiser. However, um, I'd probably maybe just use a LUT that um, sort of has some sort of black fade to just kind of push the attention away from that noise and more to the subject in the image. So what I'm gonna do now is add the popular M31 Osiris LUT, which has a teal sort of faded look in the shadows. And hopefully that should get us looking away from all that noise. And yeah, I already like the look of that. That's looking really, really, really good. It has a very orangish and teal vibe to it. And you can already tell in the shadow region, it's less distract. You aren't focused on that noise as much as before. I think overall, the thing to take away from this is just the capability of the camera. The camera is capable of shooting in low light. You will have noise, but it is nowhere near as much noise as you pretty much get on any other camera with sensor, I mean this small. 
unless we consider the uh, GH5S, of course, because they share the exact same sensor. As a person that has pre-ordered this camera, and I'm really excited to get my hands on this camera. As soon as it comes out, I will be doing a lot of coverage on the camera. So if you haven't already done so, make sure that you're subscribed because I will be posting some comprehensive content on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, just to sort of give you guys an idea of what this camera is about, who it's intended for, its capabilities, what it's good at, what it's not good at. So overall, I think the one thing to take away from this is that this is a very serious cinema camera. If you're the type of person that's been and, you know shooting their videos on DSLRs and mirrorless cameras then this camera will be really really different to you and there'll be a bit of a learning curve as soon as you get this camera because this is a serious cinema camera which requires a decent amount of post-processing to really get the sort of results that you would expect from this camera and I think that's the major thing to point out here is that if you think that you're just gonna get this camera and you know record your videos and then they're all of a sudden gonna look amazing. That is not the case. Because with this type of camera, you're really gonna have to push the files and post. You're really gonna have to get that dynamic range going, really get those colors going. And only then, that's when you can really realize the full potential. Make sure that you subscribe now, hit the notification button so that you get these notifications as soon as I get this camera. The camera should be coming out in the next few weeks. Hopefully I should be able to get my hands on one very soon. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Catch you folks in the next one.